Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending June the 4th, 2021. You know, it was a sideways week with a lot of volatility, ended with some superb uh, employment uh, numbers. So we we'll look forward to next week being a great trade. Since we are becoming more active and the economy is reopening, I thought it behooved me to go back and remind everybody to ma maintain and manage your digital assets. Can you imagine uh, with all the proliferation of cryptocurrency and everything else that we do, we virtually have the bulk of our estates online in some fashion or another and a huge amount of information, uh, intellectual property, uh, etc. I mean, the list is just endless because our lives uh, are, are, are pretty much revolving around uh, storing information online. So to the extent that managing digital assets has become an estate planning necessity and uh, you need to make provisions for these assets in your estate planning documents because if you don't it causes a lot of trouble an unnecessary expense for your fiduciaries and your and your survivors as you go on in response to this georgia and the sister states all the neighboring states really back in 20 as far back as 2018 passed the Revised Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Assets Act. And uh, that allows uh, your fiduciaries to gain access as a third party designee to your online uh, information. And um, But in order to do that, you have to avail yourselves of the priorities that are set forth in the law. You have to name a third party designee. Now, most of your large uh, uh, online companies are going to have this uh, provision. So you need to go into your personal settings and look for a uh, third party designee or some similar type of language, a person that you want to be able to have access to your account in the event of your incapacity or death. And if you don't do that, then you need at least, uh, it, it, or if the company doesn't have that provision available, at least if you have that 30 party designee named in your estate planning documents, then at the time, uh, your fiduciary, your personal representative, whoever, uh, person holding uh, your your agency, uh, the powers of, under a power of attorney, could go in there and present those documents and say, look, company here, uh, you know, I do have legal authority to go in here and manage this. If you don't do anything, you're at the whim of the company, and that can be very frustrating and very expensive uh, down the line. So why do that? Can you imagine somebody with a lot of liquid assets uh, tied up on, in an online account and nobody having access to that account? It's just a nightmare scenario. So the easiest way to do that is to designate um, a person to have that responsibility on you know, the most elegant solution in my opinion is you got to make sure that your password manager is uh, that you've got a good one and it's robust it's crypt encrypted and that it's uh, it's 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 a reputable company there's a lot of those uh, available to you uh, online but a password manager that's going to encrypt passwords and those master credentials to that so use that use that password manager everything that you do online and then the master credentials to that you can put in your estate planning documents and you got to keep those current you got to let people know you know what where, where to find that information then that is so that it's current but then if somebody if your fiduciary then has access to that master credentials they can go on and they can access any account you might have online and take the appropriate action with those digital assets so um, do that, keep that up to, up to date. And that's something that you need to look into. And it's been a short week, but a good week. And we look forward to a better week next week. If I can be of any assistance to you, don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. I'll see you next week.